Well, this is going to be a special case of something we've studied already. We talked about the sum and difference formulas for the trig functions, how you could get the values of sine or cosine in particular for a sum of angles or a difference of angles. What I'd like to do is to look at the special case of that if the sum of angles happens to be two terms that are the same angle, just adding an angle to itself. That doubles the angle and the addition formulas give what are called the double angle formulas in that case. So the double angle formulas will look at the case for sine and cosine. Sine of double and angle to theta is the same as theta plus theta. We know that the sine of an angle added to itself is the first time, the sine of the first times the cosine of the second plus the cosine of the first times the sine of the second. Since it's the same angle, that's two copies of this sine theta times cosine theta term. So two sine theta cosine theta. If we do it for the cosine formula, the cosine of the sum of angles was cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus sine of the first, sine of the second. Again, since the first and the second are the same angle, you're adding the angle to itself, theta plus theta. It is two factors of cosine and two factors of sine. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now, this is one version of the cosine double angle formula. I've got two other versions. They arise from this one by applying one of the Pythagorean identities. It is cosine squared theta is the same thing as 1 minus sine squared theta. So this is 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta, if you want to write it that way, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Or sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine squared theta, so you could write it as 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. We'll have a couple slides later on where it's a handy thing to be able to write down what's going on in terms of a single trig function, sine or cosine, rather than this version of the formula which has both sine and cosine tangled up in it. First let's look at a special case where we can use the double angle formulas in a particular situation, a standard kind of a situation. We're given a value of a trig function and some geometric information. The sine of theta is given as 5 thirteenths, a particular ratio, and we furthermore know that the angle is in quadrant 2. So let's use those things to find the exact value of the sine and cosine of the double angle. Well, we can draw a picture to sort out the facts. We'll draw in a triangle with side opposite 5 and hypotenuse 13 and draw it with the angle in quadrant 2. So to find the exact value of sine 2 theta, let's see, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem trick, a squared plus b squared equals r squared. I think I've got my labeling a little bit funny here. I usually write the side opposite as b and this is a. I think I've gotten it backwards. Let's see. Yeah, I wrote as though this was a, but this side is still the missing leg and it's the side adjacent to the reference angle. We'll keep track of that whether we call it a or b. So this side is the missing part of the Pythagorean theorem. This is a nice triangle, a 5, 12, 13 triangle. B squared is 144, so this length is 12. The thing to be careful of is the way that reference triangle is positioned. This is going in a negative horizontal direction, so we better take minus 12 as the appropriate square root to label the side of the reference triangle. So what we've got is the given value of sine theta, 5 thirteenths, the value that we'll need for these double angle formulas, cosine theta, is minus 12 thirteenths. So we can plug that in then into the formulas. Let's do that. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta, so we can plug in 5 thirteenths as the given value, minus 12 thirteenths as the calculated value, and we'll get a value 2 times 5 times 12 is 10 times 12, 120. Uh, 
13 squared is 169, and there's a minus. So minus 120 over 169. That's the value that comes out for the sine of 2 theta. Here's a common sense thing that you should do to, to make sure you're on the right track. You know that no matter what the angle is, the sine is guaranteed to be between minus 1 and 1. So if in the process of doing this arithmetic that gets screwed up and you get a value bigger than 1 or less than minus 1 here, it's worth looking to figure out where the arithmetic mistake happened. Okay, the cosine double angle formula, we'll use the cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta version of it. Cosine squared theta from 12 thirteenths with a minus squared, it's the positive value, 144 over 169. 5 thirteenths squared is 25 over 169. 144 minus 25 is 119, so 119 over 169 is what comes out for cosine. Let's see, sine of 2 theta turned out to be negative, cosine 2 theta turned out to be positive, sine is negative and cosine is positive in quadrant 4, so this particular angle in quadrant 2, when it got doubled, when it went from theta to 2 theta, it went from having a terminal side in quadrant 2 to having a terminal side in quadrant 4. And the values that we got for the trig functions are consistent with that happening. Okay, now let's try to go backwards, not to a double angle formula, but to a half angle formula. The way I will do that is to solve one of those alternate versions of the uh, cosine double angle formula. Let's start with the version cosine 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta and solve that for sine squared theta. So put sine squared theta by itself and then divide through by the coefficient. There's a formula that tells you about sine squared of theta in terms of cosine of twice the angle, cosine 2 theta. And let's do the, the mirror image formula for cosine 2 theta. It's the other version of it. Cosine 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So that you could solve that for cosine squared theta. Isolate cosine squared theta and then divide by its coefficient of 2. So cosine squared theta is in terms of 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Let me write down two formulas then. Sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. Cosine squared theta is 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. And gosh, we're so close. Sine and cosine give tangent by the quotient identity. Tangent theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. So tangent squared theta is sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. That's this fraction on top, this fraction on the bottom. The twos cancel, so 1 minus cosine 2 theta, 1 plus cosine 2 theta. That ratio is tangent squared of theta. Now what that tells for theta rel relative to 2 theta is sine of an angle is relevant to the cosine of twice the angle. What if we interpret this at, as a half angle formula? Then it would be a half angle here, and double the half angle would be the whole angle. So I want to write these formulas down. Instead of with theta and 2 theta, I'd like to write it with half an angle and the angle. Those are the half angle formulas. I'll do it with the parameter alpha. Sine squared alpha over 2, that's like the theta, is 1 minus cosine alpha over 2. Understand this as theta doubled is 2 theta, alpha over 2 doubled is alpha. So this formula has the same relationship that this one does. It's just written as alpha over 2 as the half angle and then alpha as the angle rather than writing it as theta as the angle and 2 theta as double the angle. Same trick, theta is replaced by alpha over 2. So 2 theta is replaced by alpha, and there's a formula for cosine squared of alpha over 2 and tangent squared of alpha over 2. Exactly the same trick to give a relation between a half angle and a full angle that matches what we derive for the relation between the angle and the double angle. So we can write down a 
solving that for sine of alpha over 2, cosine alpha over 2, or tangent alpha over 2. The only wrinkle is, since those formulas have a square in them, to do it just for, without the square, we're going to take a square root. And it's not automatic whether it should be the positive or the negative square root. We'll leave it in a formula with plus or minus, and we'll have to do a little bit of background stuff to decide where alpha over 2 happens to be relative to alpha to get whether it should be a positive or a negative for the appropriate trig function value for the half angle. So let's try one of these. Here's another special case. Cosecant of alpha is minus 3 halves. I'll tell you that alpha is in quadrant 3 between pi and 3 pi over 2 radians. We want the exact values of those trig functions, alpha over 2. So let's write down what's, gonna, what's going on. We'll have the angle in quadrant 3 as given. So half of the angle, we, like, look what you're doing. From this inequality, alpha between pi and 3 pi over 2, we'd like to see where alpha over 2 happens to be. So we'll take this equation and just divide it all the way through by 2. Pi divided by 2, alpha divided by 2, 3 pi over 2 divided by 2, and that gives you the quadrant where alpha over 2 is. It has to be in quadrant 2, and so the signs, whether the trig functions are positive or negative there, will say what we should pick when we have to choose a plus or a minus for those square roots. So cosecant of alpha is side Let's see, cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so hypotenuse over opposite, three halves, so we'll take the positive for the R and the negative for the side B. So the given information, cosecant alpha is minus three halves, will let you label a reference triangle with two given numbers. Then we'll calculate the missing number by the Pythagorean theorem to get the side A. That would be A squared plus B squared is R squared. We'll plug in minus 2 for B and 3 for R and find that A squared is 5. This is an angle that was given in quadrant 3. In quadrant 3, both the X and the Y coordinates are negative. So I should pick the minus square root when I say what A is. It is minus root 5. So now I've got the three magic numbers to build all my trig function ratios, A and B and R. Let's write down what's happening for cosine of alpha. It is side adjacent over hypotenuse. We found that to be minus 5 over 3. So the half angle formula, 1 minus cosine alpha over 2, we have to plug in that cosine alpha value that we calculated, minus 5 over 3. And with that built in, we can multiply top and bottom by 3 to simplify a little bit. And 3 times 1 is 3, minus a minus 5 makes it plus, minus, a minus root 5 makes it plus root 5, and the 3 cancels when I multiply through. Multiply top and bottom to preserve the value of the fraction under the radical. 2 times 3 is 6. So that is the simple, simplest way I can write it. This nested radical expression is what sine of alpha over 2 is exactly. Cosine of alpha over 2 is the square root 1 plus cosine alpha over 2. We saw that alpha over 2 has to be in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, sine was positive, but cosine is negative. So we pick the positive square root for sine, and we'll pick the negative square root for cosine. And when I plug in that cosine alpha value that we calculated and do the same simplification, 3 minus root 5 over 6, and there's the minus out outside. And lastly, tangent of alpha over 2, 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha, square root of that, and we pick the negative square root because alpha over 2 
is in quadrant 2, and in quadrant 2 tangent is negative. So plug in minus root 5 over 3 for cos and alpha top and bottom. Multiply through top and bottom by 3 to get rid of that compound fraction, and it's 3 minus a minus plus root 5, 3 minus root 5 under the radical with the minus out front to make the tangent alpha over 2 negative in quadrant 2. I will ask you to remember to the extent of being able to just without thinking about it writing it down formulas for sine and cosine of the double angles and formulas for sine and cosine of the half angles. The tangent formula my feeling is it's so close to those that it's a little overkill to make you memorize that. If you need it, I'll either give it to you or remind you how to quickly derive it so you'll have it when you need it.